so new project. Um, we're in the midst of our giveaway for the M2CS. That's happening now. So go buy some stuff so you can win this car. It's, it's an awesome car. I actually really like it a lot. And I had a lot. Of, I had my hand in in fixing it up too. Anyway, so here's what we're doing. So we're gonna finally install the KWS 700 TS, uh, and we're gonna do a blue Cox uh, hose reel. We're gonna use our OG spec um, pressure washer hose, 100 feet of that. So a pressure washer is gonna go somewhere about right here. I'm gonna flank it with the hose reel here. We're gonna do some testing for uh, DI, um, so something we're working on. So hose bib over here, but the problem is, it's not really a problem, but it's an extra step, is this thing weighs over 100 pounds. And as Matt remembers, there's only plywood back here. So I don't know what, I don't, I'm not gonna risk throwing some lags in the plywood and hanging this heavy thing on it because it might end up on top of Matt's hood if he parks a car here. So I'm gonna cut this whole wall out. I'm probably gonna move that power over plumb for, because I don't think these are where we want the, the, the feed for the, definitely not water for the pressure washer wouldn't go there. And this is probably not where we want the hose bib. So I'm gonna move these around. So I'm gonna get started on that today, get the wall cut apart, start mocking things up, and uh, we'll uh, keep you guys updated as we go along. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun trying to get everything all dusty with drywall dust. Yeah, maybe have to use a vacuum and I don't, I, don't have my, I don't have my number one assistant anymore. Yeah. He's going to be polishing a car today. So Matt's, Matt's out of, I don't get him today. So I'm going to have to do it myself. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Like I said, go buy some stuff so you can win that car. That's a, that's a pretty awesome car. If I, was, if, I wasn't, if I didn't have the F80, I, I would rock that for sure. So anyway, I like the color too. All right, so in the effort of keeping uh, the place clean, I'm gonna pop these tiles all the way around. It's gonna be cutting all this drywall. So, tile popper. Everybody complains about how if dirt gets under it, you can't clean it. It's super easy. So, use tile popper. Stick them here. Step on this side. Pull that side up. Simple as that. It's not a big deal. I'll come out probably to about here. See, just like that. You can take a whole garage up in about five minutes. All right. Now I don't make a mess. Look at that. You'd never know that stuff's under there. It's not very dirty actually, but all right, Mike. All right, Mike. So this is where I'm at. <clears throat> pressure washer's hanging here. There's two keyholes on the back side of the pressure washer. So what I did is I got half inch bolts. And when I was cutting this plumbing apart to move the hose bib, because it's actually got to go here is the bucket filler. The water's going to actually come over here to feed uh, DI and feed the pressure washer. Anyway, when I did that, I opened this up and there's enough room that I could barely reach my arm up here, put a half inch bolt through here and I nutted it with a washer here and then it'll be double nutted. So the pressure washer will hang on these bolts and I feel comfortable with this. This is gonna be sturdy because I used a big washer on the back side, cut the bolts off so the pressure washer will hang on here, put another washer and a bolt or a nut I should say. And then, uh, so that's, that's pretty much done. Now what I have to do is cut a hole here for power. So I'm gonna end up moving the 30 amp 240 volt circuit here. And then um, I'm gonna move, like I said, the water over here. I'm gonna put a bucket filler at 48 inches right here. And that'll pretty much be it. And then I'll fin fix all the drywall and get everything mounted. So that's the update. Piece of cake, Mike. Piece of cake. Let's go get some cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I feel like I need to bring a cooler up there and buy like a hundred and put them in the freezer. That's not a horrible idea, yeah, Mike. It's not a bad idea, Mike. It's not horrible. And then just take them out in waves, you know, like once every couple weeks, take out a dozen. Yeah. You know, I mean, why, why not? Do you think they'll be the same? I think they'll be all right. They're frozen. I've frozen like baked goods before. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be all right. It's worth a shot, Mike. It is. It's worth it. You know, I'm going to treat myself here and there. Okay, so that's where we're at. You filming? Are you vlogging, Mike? Hang on, Mike. So, I'll, I'll right. let you know what this goes. Oh, put the settings right, Mike. I have to have the settings right. Okay, so a little update on our pressure washer next door in the yarn building. So, we don't have any more of these prior in stock, the P114D4. So, what I'm having to do is this is where the pressure washer used to be installed. So, they've been wanting to get rid of this anyway and make this a wall for shipping packages. I'm going to put uh, FRP up here so it won't get all marred up. But 
Long story short, I'm cutting this out, removing it, and gonna reuse it over there because we too can't get these. We're, they're back ordered. So anyway, that's the plan. Get it cut out, cap it off, button the wall back up, mud it, and then Trevor will be happy because he can stack packages against here and this that's won't right. be in the way, you know? And Mike. <laughs> Mike and Mike. You know. That's Trevor. That's for sure. He is my son. Trevor. Number one shipper in all of Kazakhstan. Nice hat. <laughs> he kind of looks like me. He kind of does. Yeah, he got. He's older than you. Do, do yeah, the people is. know what you look like, though, Mike. No, no he doesn't. He's he's. It's strictly on the down low. That's right. He, he's. He has to hold the camera like this because he's so short. People don't realize he's only that tall. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'm cutting this apart, doing this. is a Milwaukee multi-tool. It's an the M18 variety. Mm -hmm. I can't see the port number. Mike, can you? No. It's too dusty with drywall dust, Mike. Yeah. Matt's not going to be happy. It is the uh, 2836. Do you like that tool? Heck yeah, I like it. It's great. It makes, it makes a little bit of dust cutting drywall, but that's fine. Anyway, so looks like I'm going to have to take it down to here. But, yeah, there's our pipe. <coughs> I installed this about, I don't know, gosh, how long has it been? Four years ago? Three years, maybe. Yeah, so I'm gonna cut this off right here and put a cap, glue a cap on it, and uh, that'll be that, and then this whole assembly will come out. This is our old blocking. It's blocked all over the place for all the old stuff. But it's giving me something nice to screw to, so I can put the drywall patch back in. This is already loose, so anyway. Do you have to make a block like that? No, I won't because that wall's much deeper. I had to do this to space it off because the four inch is the shortest one we can get. I wish they made it in like a, an inch and a half or a close nip on the back side or two inch because then you could use it in a four inch thick wall. But we will do what we have to do, Mike, make it work. Um, you're, you're vlogging, Mike, the side of my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit. Yeah. See, Mike, is that better? Yeah, it's Maybe a more wide angle, so you can yeah. see my shoulder too. See the M2 in the back. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's a giveaway, Mike. If the people didn't know, that car is gonna be free to somebody. All they have to do is buy some stuff on the website. Mm -hmm. I would do it, but I can't now. Now that I'm an employee, I don't qualify. Yeah, it sucks. yeah, I used to. I used to buy a lot of stuff on the giveaways. Yeah. What was I doing, Mike? I lost my train of thought talking about M2s. Uh, we need to make a list for Home Depot, Mike. That's what we're doing. See, Home Depot, first number one on the list, single gang box. Okay. I need some uh, number 10 wire. <clears throat> Probably four feet. Not much. Not much, Mike. Uh, number 10 wire is for 30 amp circuit, Mike. You got it. <laughs> need. I have the cover plate, I'll use that one. Um, we got that. What, which are your favorite cinnamon rolls, Mike? <laughs> While I'm thinking about what else I need here. Country Bake Shop. Country Bake Shop is right, Shop Hay, S-O-S-H-O-P-P-E, Shop Hay. It's French, Mike. Okay, I have mud, drywall tape, I need mud, because they're all at Matt's house. I need to start building up some inventory here, so I don't have to dart over to Matt's house to pick up some screws are you filming me do this list the whole the whole yeah, time mike it's really, it's really it's riveting information mike really so you're gonna have to cut it down like and then <laughs> so funny i need some let's say some construction screws this is really you know mike this is this is going to take us over the top this is going to go viral this right here this piece right here is gonna get us to a million subs. It has to be. It will, Mike. Yeah. I'm telling you. I mean, can you imagine watching a guy stand there with his phone make a list? How, how, I never get to see that on YouTube. Never. You know? 
You get to see it in real life. It's amazing, isn't it? It's even worse. <laughs> it's even worse, isn't it? Oh, Mike, you're, you're kind of a smart fella, aren't you? I think that's it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go to Depot, Mike. All right, quit holding me up. It's Starbies, huh? Oh, boy. So 10, that's, ooh, man. <laughs> Look at that. Ha, well, wait a minute. 12 three, I looked at the other day. It's like 200 and some odd bucks. Where is it? For a 100 foot roll. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. $208 for 100 feet of 12.3. That used to be like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. It's crazy. I used to buy 250 footers of that. Something about Depot, Mike, it's it's just so scattered. Like, I don't, the way they lay out things sometimes doesn't make sense. No, and then they'll have like all the parts and fittings you need in half. Then you drop down to three quarter and they skip some things that you would need it doesn't make sense. I don't know why they don't just stay consistent. Carry half, three quarter, one inch, inch and a half, two inch. You know, inch and a quarter is kind of not that common, but and just carry all the same pieces but on those different sizes. And they don't do it. These are snap in bushings. So if you have a what's called a knockout in a box, a metal box or a, a sub panel or something or an enclosure, you snap these in, then you can stab the wire through. That way the wire doesn't chafe on the edge of the metal sheet metal. So that's, yeah, yep. Pushkin connectors or bushing, however you want to call it. So now I need some plumbing. So we got these. received a email. Oh, it's from OG. Email from Nick Nasser. Hey everyone, some of you may or may not know that I am trying to do more stuff outside of work together. One, because it's fun. Two, because it, I think it can be an excellent way to talk, interact, and come up with new ideas. So Brad and Tommy came up with a good idea to go go-karting. This event will be right after work on Thursday the 20th at Adrenaline Rush Raceway in Leesburg. So any of you watching this video, head over. See Nick and Tommy and Brad. Who's, who do you think is going to smoke who? I think Tommy's got them all. Tommy's probably probably, really like probably the, wastes yeah. them all. But he's got the weight advantage too. Plus, like, and and go karts, dude. It's all about if you're lighter, you're you're gonna you're winning. You're winning. Good job, Nick. I like the thinking out. Like like he's thinking outside the box. He's putting together some community events. Community events. Key, you know, camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Workplace environment is a. It's key to have good uh, camaraderie. Well, what did I come over here for, Mike? Oh, wire nuts. I already got them. See how the tip is just pointed? So that's screwing the wood. This is for screwing into metal studs. See how there's a self drilling on the end? Yeah. Because these are kind of, you can get these through metal studs, but these are better. They drill and pierce through very easily. Now we need some construction screws. Always put your cart back, Mike. You a little courtesy rev there, Mike? Yeah. I'm to come around and get more materials, Mike. All this stuff's in here. Got some organics in here, Mike. No cinnamon rolls, though. Nope, nope. No, I wish. Why right, you gotta... When I go on trips, I need this, Mike. I'll show you, see what I have here, Mike. I don't, I, it's, it's pretty light today, Mike, pretty light. But, see, it's almost full to the top there. But I got some, I've got some organic sweet potato tortilla chips. They're pretty tasty. Matter of fact, let me make sure they're still good. Okay. Mm, they are. Peach yogurt and a sandwich. Okay. And my napkin just gets, you know, sometimes I get messy. Yeah. Wipe up there, okay? And then I'm gonna drink some water. Yeah. Pretty well done lunch. Yeah. I'll leave that right here, Mike. Okay. 
Okay, so starting to get some building some stock here, Mike. Okay, so I cut the old uh, prior out of the system so we can use it next door, and I've got cut and capped the, the CPVC that was here feeding this. So we'll just leave that in there because you never know. May change our mind someday and put a pressure washer back in. So I'll remove it all and then you know it'll happen. Hey, maybe we should put one over there again. <laughs> so anyway, let's stay in there and I'm gonna put some blocking and blocking here, screw two here, and I'll put one across here and I'll patch this drywall and give it a quick uh, tape and skim coat and then we can let these guys have it back. I'm gonna put, I think I mentioned, I'm gonna put um, FRP, which is fiberglass reinforced plastic. That paneling they put in uh, bathrooms, I'm gonna put it up eight feet high, so just a little higher than that door, up and around, so that when they stack box, it doesn't mar the wall up like this. They can wipe it clean. It's powered up. So I gotta put a cover plate on this and uh, I'm gonna install the reel and then I'll actually, probably won't hang the pressure washer just yet, I could, but I, I've gotta touch up paint. So I might do go get the paint right now just so I can get it off the ground and get it up there. And I can, I've gotta shorten the cord. That's that, the way I did it was I put the plug so it's right in this area here. So from, so it'll fit just like this in here. It'll be kind of tucked in here. Huh? Yeah, how to shorten a cord, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna shorten the cord. So what I wanna do is take, obviously I'll take the plug off first. And, do is kind of estimate a length here. So I think I'm going to tuck it back here like so and the plug is right about here. So probably make it right about there. And I got to commit now. Here we go. They do give you plenty of cord. Okay, so put our housing on, our strain relief, and then you don't want to cut the cord way back far because then it, then it ends up being that the that it's it's not it's past the body of the plug and it's the strain relief will end up pinching the wires without the jacket on it. So you don't need to cut it very far. Probably in this one, maybe inch and a quarter back and always don't cut this way, always cut lengthwise. You can kind of feel when you touch the paper, there's little paper strips in there that are fillers. So you can feel when you touch it. See, I didn't even touch the, touch the actual wire insulation and just trim around it. Okay. And these out of the way and cut our little filler pieces off. So essentially, when you strip and you're looking like that, so that's gonna be enough. Ow. So you don't get a copper splinter, they're not fun. Sometimes you gotta take a little flesh with it, Mike. I can still feel it. I think I got it. So, I always like to go ground first. I don't know, I just always have since I was an apprentice. Green first, because you want to make sure your ground's hooked up, so if you do that, you're not going to screw it up. Because if you stick one of the hot leads in here and plug it in, it's going gonna, it's gonna to trip the breaker immediately. And this is 240, so you really don't have to have white go to silver if you have a silver 
because it's 240, so this is gonna be both golds because they're both hot leads. So if you're confused, if you're using, used to working on 120 volt stuff and you start working on 240 and you're looking for a silver screw, there isn't one. This is why I like the surge. You can just inch up on it, it doesn't strip. Normally I'd just be using a screwdriver for this, but this thing makes it nice. See, and that is what it should look like, nice and tight. That way when they slide the cord body on here, or the plug body, see there's an alignment. See that little notch, it's aligned with this little key. There we go. Now you can see when the cord grip comes down, it's only clamping on the cord jacket. If you strip the cord jacket too far back, then they end up being in, there's the, the you'll see the wires and you'll end up be, uh, you'll end up clamping on the wires, which is not what you want. Well, the non-240 come with a GFCI plug on them, so no, you don't shorten them from there. You gotta, you gotta take the, the cover off the top of like a 1322, you take the cover off and you shorten it, shorten the cord at the machine versus shorten it at the plug. Because it does come with a GFCI, these do not. Because it's, it's just, it's 240, not 120 anyway. So, so that's where it's gonna go, just like that. So there's a nut <clears throat> and a washer on the wall, like that, sticking out. So that's what these are going to come against, right? So then this is the same thickness now as these. So this is on the same plane. So I'll put these here. Now when it's hanging off of the studs, with have, which have the jam nut and the washer on there, everything will be plumb with the wall. So all I have to do is drill a couple of holes in this tubing, provided bolts that came with it. Same. It's the same tubing, so I'll just use the same hardware. Pressure washer's hung. We've got our half inch studs. It's uh, bolted to, it's rigid. I, I can hang off of it. So it's not going anywhere. Um, so now, um, cords in. I just I have it nice and tucked tight here. You can see where the, the plug just clears by about a quarter of an inch. It's shortened to length. I'll probably throw a zip tie up here to keep it nice and tight against, the, against these uh, vibration dampeners. So, um, reels in. I've got a, I'm gonna have a custom uh, length whip hose made to come from the from the outlet to uh, the inlet of the hose reel. Um, I'm starting on the water now. This is, I think I mentioned before, this is where our bucket filler is going, center line of the reel, 48 inches up. So I've got our uh, drop beer 90 on the back side. I'm gonna, that's the prior I took out of uh, the warehouse. So this is, we're reusing this. So this will be going there. And then I'm going to put another drop beer 90 here with uh, that'll be a, a half inch uh, a female pipe when I'll put a plug on it because we'll tie into that for feeding DEI and the uh, pressure washer. So that's what I'm working on now. So this is this looks good. I'm happy. The only thing is, is I will mention is uh, the motor and head are so heavy out here that it does list this way. So 
just talking to Matt, I think what I might try to do is buy, um, I don't really want to use washers because a stack of washers looks kind of hokey. So I think I'm going to get go to like McMaster or somebody like that and buy some buy some um, spacer tubing with this uh, ID hole, and then I'll cut it to the right length and put a put a spacer under here. So so at least the motor, because you notice the fins are all pointing downhill, and I'd like it to look you know level with the level with the unit. So that's a detail I'll do after we're all done. But I think I think I do want to do that. I think it'll look better. So that's where we're at. I've got all the plumbing tied back in, water's currently off, the prior hose vib's installed. Um, I just have to do, I'm gonna do a Prevo out of the wall for this is gonna be for the supply for the DI and the pressure washer. So what I'm gonna do is do a 90 down. I got, I've got a half inch drop ear 90 there, which will go to this 90, which is half by one inch Prevo. And then I'll do um, the other end of it. I'll put a short piece of Prevo to have it down, three quarter inch male pipe. I can shut that off and then whatever I wanna do after that I can tie them. But at least I can isolate the system now because prior there was no way to shut off anything here. So this will isolate that. Um, then I'm just gonna do some taping, mudding, get this all patched up, painted, and then I can start mocking up our uh, DI. I don't know, probably between this and next door cutting the wall apart, probably 14, 15 hours total. I mean, you know, some of that is finding parts, going on next door and getting things and this and that, but yeah, probably about that. Mm, well, I mean, everyone, that's the thing is everyone's custom, right? So it depends what you have to deal with, right? So we had plywood here, no studs. So it took a little more time to uh, put bolts and double nut it and all that stuff and get this thing hung. I did, I put the jumper hose on. This is our three foot OG spec jumper hose. Put a, and a vibration clamp here to hold that. So this, so when you turn this, this doesn't spin, right? Um, the only thing I think I talked about before is I'm going to do something probably with this to get this level. That should be easy to do. But yeah, we're just about there. I, I think we can get we can get water going today and get it get it running, and then uh, then play with the DI. All right. So a little update where we are. I've uh, it's fire taped. I put a coat of mud on there. It's an in, another coat or two. Then I can uh, get it painted. Uh, we have our 24-inch uh, bucket filler installed. Um, I put the hose on, jumper hose is done. This is going to be our inlet for to DI and just regular water. So that's that's about where we are. So I've got to just do another coat or two of mud, get it painted, and we're gonna do we're gonna leave it open like this. We talked about maybe putting shelves here, but I think we've since changed our minds and we're gonna put four 32 inch shelves on the left side of this cabinet here, leave this open because we want, Matt likes it the way it looks, and I do too. I think it looks good open like this and gives room for the buckets. So anyway, probably uh, tomorrow, another coat or two of mud, and then we'll be, we can call this job Dunzo. This is a final coat of mud. This is the third coat. Um, I think I've mentioned before, I don't like to sand. So I prefer to, to do three coats of mud. You got your taping coat your top, and then two top coats. And I can get it to the point where it's very smooth without sanding, because sanding makes a mess. Um, so yeah, so that's what's left to do. I'm gonna let this dry. It'll be dry today, probably in a couple hours. And then I'll paint it. And then the last final detail is gonna be, I'm gonna put this, this escutcheon ring on here, but I can't do it before. So this is gonna go around this, like this. But 
So it'll, I'll screw it this way like that. That'll trim that out and uh, that and paint. And then the only thing we're going to leave it the way it is simply because we're, I'm not going to bring water directly from this into the pressure washer because we're going to be doing some mock-up because we're doing a lot of R and D on uh, our own pressure washing system. So kind of leave that alone just because we're going to be testing different, um, different uh, tanks and resins and what have you. So we kind of need to leave it uh, a bit of a blank slate as far as the DI system goes, but it's ready to go. Um, it'll run right now if we just bring our whip hose up here, our flex hose up here and turn it in the pressure, put it into the pressure washer. But yeah, check it off the list almost. So we'll get it painted and it'll look, it'll look dialed when it's painted. I'll get this on. Uh, one little detail, little tweak I made was here and it drove me nuts that the fins weren't parallel with the unit. So I added three uh, fender washers in here that are the same diameter as the, as the rubber anti-vibration and that brought it up nice and level. Now what I would really ideally like to do is replace these with some stainless washers so they, these are zinc so I'll probably order some that are, that are stainless but I just wanted to test it out and see how it looked because it was kind of bugging me because everything else is stainless. And that's what we do. Well, it's the details, Mike. It's the obsessed stuff, you know? All right, anyway, so yeah, next time you guys see it, it'll be done, it'll be painted, and uh, it'll look like nothing ever happened. All right, so final step, throw some paint on here. This is always the most satisfying part. After you get the, the mud all nice and smooth, the wall smooth. I can't get this roller to turn too slippery, because we're gonna go that way. Anyway, so I uh, forgot the name of this color. You remember, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with the ships or boats or something? Harbor. Ah, that's it, Harbor. Harbor Gray, AC25. I did a little test section right here and it does match, so. Any, uh, <laughs> Negative, just paint. <laughs> this is pretty simple. Yeah, the only thing is, is this, this five gallon pail has been sitting for a while, so there's some, there's some gunk in the paint, dried paint in the paint. A little frustrating, but that's all right. Get around it. Mike, are you, are, you, uh, are you vlogging, Mike? Now these things, oftentimes, this flange is not square with this tube. I can see it's not. So what I do is I kind of, rather than, I tr I've tried using a level before just to get, and it, it's best to look at it from a distance. And Oops, sorry, Michael because I can tell right now, see the flange is tipped uphill, but this is, this is plumb. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not a big deal, but that looks good right there. That's a wrap, Mike. So that's done. We gotta, we gotta get Matt a wand, and a gun, a tip, and then uh, I think we talked about four. Everything's done with the exception of, I'll probably, while we're uh, doing our R&D for, for um, DI, I'll probably just get a, a longer flex hose to come up to here. So that way we can at least use it off of just, you know, tap water, and then we'll, in between, we'll, we'll do our DI. So. He's straightened up. I like it. So we'll call that done. Like, looks good. The M2 hmm? Oh yeah, that's right. M2 giveaway. If you should buy some of these, I wonder if those qualify. I don't know. Yeah, probably not, huh? Black bucket package. Does. That does though, right? Mm -hmm. So does a lot of the detailing products. Milwaukee. Uh, polisher. Polish. See, there you go. I would do it if I could qualify to win it. We don't qualify, Mike. It's a sad thing. What would happen if one of us won? <laughs> that would look a little fishy on my... <laughs> All right.